Hey everyone, I'm back, and this time more stories too, and I know a lot of people are very excited to get their Nogagante and to start beefing and juicing him up with jeans, so I thought I would show you my Nogagante, who is almost completely finished with the uh, the stars and everything. There's only one gene there that isn't maxed out, and 2-6, you're joining us today, um, okay. and you are howdy doody to 2-6, but just howdy before doody. you say anything... I want you to tell people your experience of playing against Nogagante, or my Nogagante in PvP, just so, just because I feel like people might not have experienced PvP yet, and they're probably going to be starting to use them in PvE soon, so. Alright, so my my guild card currently says uh, 17 <laughs> and whatever, like, it was like 17 and 0 at one point, and it was because of this one monster, right? I could kill the rest of his team. <laughs> But Nerg was like the whole thing that I had to change my whole team. I just wanted to play with my Congolala. I just wanted to play with uh, <laughs> what else was there that I had in my team. I just wanted to play with like a bunch of other monsters. But no, this Nerg wouldn't let me. Like this Nerg Gigante was so strong. He is a beast when it comes to uh, non-elemental like damage. And uh, if you get it wrong, especially the way that Paradox has it, it specced out, it is a spicy little build here, so that you guys are definitely going to want this. And uh, I think you're going to easily be able to outperform other people if you build this in uh, PvP. I, I think agree. It's good... Literally, this yeah. Nogagante forced you to make your entire PvP build yeah. count counteract my Nogagante by putting in, like, Kirin for thunder damage, mm. by putting in your Rajang bow to get, like, huge thunder damage out. Uh, and all that kind of stuff. So let's talk about all of the skills uh, that I've gone with here. We'll start off with Self Heal XL with two pluses that I've got here. And if you didn't know, Self Heal XL, the not not the other versions, but XL specifically, only rolls on Elder Dragons. So it's a it's a fairly hard skill to get, especially to max it out like I have. You will have to farm a lot of Nogigantes or a lot of Elder Dragons in co-op expeditions, but. When you have it maxed out like this, uh, you can see here you just get a massive amount of HP at the end of each turn. Uh, it's great for PvE content, you just passively heal like a good chunk every single turn for free. And in PvP, it really helps with that sort of war of attrition that you have going on where uh, if you don't deal enough damage, he's just going to heal it back up at the end of each turn and then puts you even more on the back leg, you know? So self-heal is really good, uh, not just for your monsters, but also for your player character in, if, in PvP specifically, and PvE, um, to just constantly be healing. It applies a lot of pressure and sort of makes forces you to be more aggressive, because once you've hit the enemy, if you don't follow up with more hits, they're just going to heal it up, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, and as you can see, we've gone for a almost full elemental build here we've got uh, if we open up the bingos real quick we've got six non-elemental bingos for 140 percent bonus damage and one power bingo because nogagante hits really hard with those power moves like calamity slash and stuff that we'll get into in a minute uh, so that's the reason why we've gone for the power bingo there i will say there's not a great amount of wiggle room for the rainbow gene and there isn't a tremendous amount of synergy with like multiple speed and multiple tech uh, genes to get that, like, you know, two that you need for the rainbow gene. There is a, uh, a, a yellow one there, which we'll get into in a minute, and there is an alternate option for that yellow one as well, depending on, like, what you're going up against in PvP or PvE and what you want to do, but self-heal self -heal is a really good, really, really good all-rounder, uh, that I do recommend. It is a bit hard to farm, though. And then next up, the bane oh, of 2-6's no. existence oh, in no. PvP, oh, no. <laughs> arachnophobia, which... To my delight, when I saw this skill, it was non-elemental, I immediately thought, this is going on Nogagante, and I'm using this in PvP because it's so strong. So, 2-6, tell us what Arachnophobia does. So, Arachnophobia is a technical attack that will inflict both poison and paralysis uh, with a heavy, like, well, not a heavy, a medium non-elemental damage as well. So, it's just like an, a, a medium normal uh, attack that will just inflict paralysis and uh poison on you and why this is nasty is 
once you have poison and once you have that paralysis on you or in uh, pvp you can't do moves you're basically on the floor dying and you're crying you're like you're <laughs> the only thing that you can do is just hope that your monster has your back but then he does it on your monster as well and then you're just like why am i joined this match what is this game about and then you're like why they put arachnophobia in this game why is he plussed it up twice to make it so dangerous and then you're like oh my gosh so definitely if you're going to be building a a nerg i feel like this is one of the the abilities that really make it shine especially if a player doesn't necessarily have anything that is defensive in terms of um non-status stuff on their player character or on their monsters as well yeah what makes this move so good is that it costs 13. a 13 cost move for medium damage and that can deal both poison and paralyze both at the same time that yeah. is insane I just I, I haven't actually read the skill description for this. It says low chance, but why does it happen every turn? Like I've never seen this not <laughs> trigger. Is it bugged? Uh, well, it's plussed up twice, so that's got rate up plus plus, which maybe makes it more akin to nah. medium, maybe even high. Um, that sucks. Yeah, my, <laughs> my experience of this skill is that it will poison or paralyze almost every time. Sometimes it will do both, and that is really strong and really good. So. Uh, a really good technical attack, really cheap, and also, who expects you to get a Nergagonte on the field and then you do a technical attack? Yeah. And it's really cheap, so you can do it first turn. It is a good, like, uh, what do you call it, like, you know, spin ball. It's like, you don't yeah. expect it. Yeah. So that is, the, that is what I've gone for, for the technical attack. I really like that attack. I really recommend you don't sleep it. It's Shrouded Narcilla that gives that move, so you make sure you farm a few Shrouded Narcillas so that you can uh, plus it up. But next up, we have one that I think uh, everyone should be using on their monsty, like, you know, elemental dependent. We have non-element attack boost, a serious boost to his non-elemental attack, plus up twice. We, of course, have the XL version here. Uh, you would be kind of crazy not to use this. Uh, we did just say over on 2.6's Teostra video, where we talk about your build for Teostra 2.6, that maybe there's a, a hidden cat behind the scene that we don't know about, right? Yeah, maybe we don't know about that cat, but for now, treat this as your attack gem or your crit boost or any one of those abilities that works really well on your rise hunters. Uh, this is going to be this ability that functions and boosts your attack massively. Uh, we've seen just great results across the board with this um, in mm -hmm. general. Uh, it might be completely anecdotal and us just kind of hoping that it does more damage, but uh for now until we know if there's a cap in the game we won't uh we're just gonna be putting it on anyway and it doesn't necessarily yep. hurt right <laughs> exactly and it's really good for this nogonte build because we have two other power non-elemental uh genes so it gives us that power bingo which is really nice as well so don't sleep on the uh the attack up ones and then next uh this is <laughs> a this is a pvp one and this is because uh me and two six have been abusing a few different strategies in pvp um and paralyze is horrible to get uh, it just can it can literally lose you the entire match if uh, if it procs a lot so the anti-paralysis gene just sort of means that you're you don't have to worry about getting paralyzed if you're going against kirin if you're going against zinoga thunderlord zinoga they all have paralyzed baked into almost every move they have and he is weak to thunder which means if they have those monsters, they're probably going to bring them out. So you just want to have this slotted so you don't have to worry about that. That being said, 2-6, if you don't care about Paralyze for PvE content, or if you want to risk it in PvP, uh, the Soul skill was what I had on here before yeah. that, which we've talked about in your Teostra video. It is a blank, non-elemental gene that increases the amount of charge for your kinship that you get. Um, it's really good. It just sort of bumps how much charge you get, which lets you do big attacks more often or your kinship attack more often so that's a really good alternative one right? thing to really talk about here as well because people be like oh there's other really cool uh random stat boosters that you can put there if you didn't want to put like anti-paralysis one of the other things that we did test is critical eye and that's obviously the one that boosts your crit rate and we didn't really find that it did massive amounts of like yeah. uh crit on it and there are a load of moves that just have inherent high crit chance built in so if you have a move that's like 16 points and is always crits anyway because it has a super high crit chance having uh the critical eye on it didn't make a massive difference so uh we weren't too sure about that but if you guys know more about how critical eye or crit chance works then let us know and uh we'll try to place that into our upcoming builds and stuff like that 
100%. Another alternative, if you don't want to use either of those two in this slot, is that you could slot in the non-elemental gene inflict rate up, which would synergize with your arachnophobia to inflict paralyze and poison more often. Um, but I've been experimenting with anti-paralysis, and it's actually been working for me in PvP. My Negagonte uh, is able to, to basically stay alive because he's not been paralyzed, but more testing needed on that slot, you know. But next up, we have my power move, which is actually... Uh, a different one that since we've last played 2-6, this is the Savage oh, Roar, I, I which only this. costs... No! <laughs> <laughs> no! So, <laughs> you, you know it's coming. It. <laughs> so, the other move that Nogigante starts with is Ruinous Tackle, which is just a heavy non-elemental damage to one enemy, costs 20. So that's all it does. It's heavy damage, costs 20. But I was looking through the genes... Uh, 2-6 may- I think you may have planted this in my head as well. Uh, for 25, so only 5 more kinship, we're going to be doing medium to all enemies, and a high chance to knock down. And by the way, <sighs> do you know what knockdown does? Because it's brokenly good. If yeah. it, if it happens, like, if they're not immune to does it, this it's does this insanely work in good. Does this work Pardon? in PvE? Does this work in PvE? Yeah, it will knock things out of the sky when you do it, so it will function like a flash bomb on flyers, like it will just knock them down. Mm. It will uh, get things to come out the floor like a sonic bomb, um, and if it can proc outside of that, it knocks things on their side and then you get a good critical hit That's in. That's nuts, uh, dude. It's a very strong skill. Uh, I am still in the process of testing this one though, but for, so far I've been loving having it on my Nogagante. You get this from a brute uh, Tigrex, so you need a few brute Tigrexes if you want to plus this up like I have. Tigrex. <laughs> Tigrex, <Tigress. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depending how you want to say it. Now the next one, two six. You know how good this one is. Uh, you're the one that sort of. Uh, He's just joining all you're the good one, gray, uh, gray yeah, jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any time, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> two six is Congalala, guys. Uh, it survived like four attacks in the in a row from me because it just kept proccing divine blessing every single time. And from the moment that that happened, I knew. That I was yeah. slotting this on my Nogagante. <laughs> so it's a yeah. non elemental gene, right? So it's perfect for Nogagante. And it applies so frequently. It seems like the proc chance of this, especially when it's plussed up twice, it says very often. It is very often, you know? Yeah, and it's not even like a small reduction in the damage that it does. It seems like it like makes it a quarter of what the damage would have happened. So if you have like a, a something that would one shot you, you're going to be living with like three quarters of your bar, or even like half bar. You're going to be substantially have like a substantially more life than you had before. And, and uh, this proc so much just on little hits and stuff like that that it just makes it worthwhile to have on your monsties and just uh, go out there and like wreck some face with it because you're going to be just tanking so much. Hundred percent. And this combined with self heal XL. You know, we we take a slither of damage. Tank. The next turn, boom, we we've healed it up. Exactly. It's a this is a really good build for like tankiness. And by the way, this build in PVE it is hard to kill this Nogigante in PVE. <laughs> it doesn't matter what move they throw at you, he's gonna live. Yeah. Um, we literally saw like a Silverwind Nogakuga do like a whole a whole, huge like AOE attack to the whole team and. Uh, Nerg just took it and then healed straight back up to full and it was like nothing even happened. I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> the re like, everyone the else, including my hunter, was like half HP or a little bit lower and Nerg yeah. was just full HP, like it didn't do anything. It was nuts. Mad. So this next power one, this is... I've really thought about if I want to keep this on him, but the times when it pops off are so good that I, I can't remove it. No, this is a this, Calamity this, it's Slash. It's necessary, this. This is 100% necessary. I think. So 50 kinship charge. This is like a finishing move almost. Massive non-elemental damage to all enemies. And then it also lowers Nogagonte's defense, but gives him auto-recovering HP for three turns. And by the way, when it says auto-recover HP, you're not talking 20 HP. You're not talking 30 HP. You're talking 70 or 80. And that will stack with your self-heal. So with self-heal, you're looking at like over 100, around 150 uh, self-heal each turn it's kind of nuts so the only way that someone's going to deal good damage to him is by like one-shotting him which is very hard to do uh two six this is the bane of your existence for our pvp matches yeah. when i get the kinship for it so i have a question for you mm -hmm. all right this is a spicy one why don't you take off self-heal all right put soul kinship in that top left hand corner and then if you get more bar 
but then you can do more calamity slashes and then if you do more calamity slashes you'll get more self heal anyway it's, it's a it's a good option to do it um mm. i don't know may, maybe it's a bit risky maybe, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit risky because as soon as I, I don't know i was thinking of removing paralyzed to do that but as soon as i remove paralyzed i know he's going to get paralyzed <laughs> and <I'm> <laughs> <It's> over. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah calamity slash really good i recommend you um plus it as well for the the power plus plus it just hits a bit harder so why not and then this next one is actually another really hard one to farm this is all element defense boost this is a skill that only elder dragons can get so you will have to farm cop, cop expeditions or Nogagontes and get lucky and get this uh get this gene this literally increases all of his ele this is not just non-elemental defense boost this is all so what we have here is a Nogagante with increased juiced up defenses, with self-heal, with divine blessing that can do calamity slash to self-heal even more. He is an absolute tank and he hits like a truck. It's like it's a nightmare to play against this Nogagante. Nasty. So uh it's hard to get the skill, I won't lie, but once you have it, uh you'll you'll enjoy it. He's and then just a finally tank. he He's is, he really is. Oh my gosh, no, he yes. didn't. <laughs> we have to talk. We have to talk about the speed skill. So, if you don't know that the he comes with a speed skill uh, that is medium damage with high chance to crit, right? And it's such a good skill because when it crits, it really, really hurts. But I was thinking, Silver Wind Nagakuga comes with Guided Spike Bomb, which is yeah. heavy damage to one enemy. Only costs nineteen, so it's a little bit cheaper than his other move that he comes with. But it's guaranteed to hit. Okay. Now, I'm not too sure about PvP, this one. I'm not too sure about out. this one. Carry on, hit carry on. If, you're, Go on. if you're in PvP and your character is low, yep. you're either going to evade or you're going to heal. And if you yeah. don't, if you if you choose to evade and I've got this move ready, then you've lost a you've you've lost a heart. Like, what you True. can't it's guaranteed to hit. So my thinking is hopefully this will be really, really good in PvP because it's that guaranteed to hit. Um, but don't sleep on his regular speed attack. This is a experimental gene slot that I'm trying out. It's, it's other one that with the high crit chance is really good. The crit chance was the thing I, I felt killed me the most because it essentially was just like it did a lot of damage, but like if it was crit, it's basically like one shot and like gone. You're just basically gone. With this, it will, you will need to see like how much damage it really does because sometimes it says heavy damage, but heavy damage on each individual move is completely different so we really need to oh well he's got like a thousand nerds just there so it doesn't really matter if he's made a mistake I'm not, he can I... it again. <laughs> exactly <laughs> i've farmed an awful lot of Dante's, so i can just slap this move back on but the other move uh, that we're talking about here is ruin a strike medium damage with high chance for a critical hit this move is very 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 good I was just experimenting with Spike Bomb, uh, Guided Spike Bomb, but I, I'm quite enjoying Guided Spike Bomb so far, uh, but we'll have to see, you know, over the course of more matches how it actually plays out. But that is my Nogagante build, uh, almost complete, still experimenting with a few things here. But I'm quite proud of it. He's actually um, oh, no, he's incredible in PvE. He's he's not let me down in PvP until you started fully specking against him yeah. with, like, your weapon, your monsties, uh, in which case I need to, like counter respond to that by switching up my monsters maybe not bring Nogagante <laughs> every single time uh, <laughs> but you know it, it is what it is he's my favorite yeah. in stories too so hopefully this helped you guys out lets you know sort of maybe what to aim for for your Nogagante and we did speak about a few you know alternate options as well because it is ultimately uh, down to your play style but 26 what videos have you got going out today so we're going to be talking about my Teostra, just like we've done here. Obviously, you've seen the video with me defeating Paradise. You know, you've seen that one, guys, haven't you? You've seen me defeat Paradise in uh, PvP, yeah, with my Teostra. <laughs> I know he's sitting there for you, and he's like going like this <laughs> and all sorts. But uh, we'll obviously have a video out on that, talking about my Teostra build, and uh, we'll be doing series like this with our preferred monsters into the future. Plus, we're going to be talking about the monster at the end of the Elder's Lair, what it is, and uh, what that mystery holds for the players as well and the DLC to come. Uh, other than that, we're going to be talking through all the egg patterns as well. So if you wanted to know what an egg pattern for a monster looked like or a monster location, we're going to have a video up on that fairly soon for you guys, just going through all of that. 
awesome. So thank you so much for watching everyone. Make sure to drop a like and subscribe down below if you are enjoying these videos and put in the comments if you have any tips or recommended genes for Nogagonte. It would be great to hear what the community sort of census is on what works really good for Nogagonte and just PvP in general. Are there any particular genes that we're overlooking that are incredibly good in PvP? Let me know in the comments. Uh, that's it for this one guys, so stay safe out there and we'll see you next time.